Good morning to you, good morning to you. We're all in our places with sunshiny faces and this is the way to start a new day. Good morning, class. Here we are at calendar. Let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So which of these two numbers point to 27? Do you hear the seven and 27? Remember what a seven looks like? Across the sky and down from heaven? That's right, this one is 27. It has a two in the front and a seven in the back and it's a kite. Let's look at our pattern. So t for this week, we just have one raindrop. So what comes after the raindrop in our pattern, remember? Raindrop, and then what's next? A kite. This is our green kite. So we'll put it there and let's go up the elevator. Ready? Do, 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 do. Sunday, Monday. Today is Monday. April 27th. The year 2020. Great job, guys. And now I'm going to do, I'll stick this there for later, our devotion. Today's devotion from the Bible says perfect timing. There is a right time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3.1. I'm probably saying that wrong. Ecclesiastes. That's a hard word. And here's what it means. It's not easy to be patient when you want something to happen. Waiting for your birthday to come or for summer to start can be so hard. But God has a time for everything. He made the seasons long enough for flowers and trees to grow. He made the days long enough for both work and play. When you get impatient, remember that everything happens exactly when God wants it to. His time is the perfect time. So here's the, the phrase to repeat, ready? God's in control of the days and the seasons. He plans it all for the greatest of reasons. And try it again. God's in control of the days and the seasons. He plans it all for the greatest of reasons. Good job. So I wanted to talk about the letter J for a couple more days. When we change months, I will change the letter. So let's look at the J again. There is the letter J, and I am going to point the camera away from me for you to see something that I'm doing with clay today. So let me turn it to here. And here we go again, with me not being able to see what you see. Maybe if I back up enough, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. So I have a ball of clay. Let's see if you can see that. Let me, okay. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get it so I can see it just quite a little bit. All right, so here's a ball of clay and I am gonna roll it in my hand to make a snake. 
Now, if I would have my other hand, I could show you rolling it between two hands. So I'm gonna have to just use uh, the, the writing board to push on. So I am rolling out a snake. And you can do that too with a table, not between your hands. Excuse my family in the background. Like I said, when I videotape, they're loud sometimes. So I apologize if you hear them. Okay, so our letter J is a straight line down. Let's do two snakes. We need two snakes for the letter J. So it's a straight line down and a curve. So there is a straight line down and a curve. And I can do it also with the writing board. So I can go straight line down and a curve. And let's do the little one, the lowercase, straight line down and a dot for the lowercase. So that's our J. And I also want to remind you, take a look. This, let me see if I can see it. This part of the life cycle of a monarch, the, the caterpillar gets into a J shape. Do you see the J shape? Straight line down and a curve. See that J shape? Isn't that interesting? And the next letter we're gonna be looking at is actually part of the monarch's life cycle too. It's the butterfly part. Monarch starts with M and that's our next letter. So both letters that we're working on this week are in the life cycle of the monarch, which is pretty cool. So now we are going to do an activity. Let's see, I will point it down here again. And I'll move this out of the way. Uh, well, maybe I can do it. Let's see. Hold on a minute, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> okay, so let's let's do it this way. I have a pencil. I want you to get a pencil too. And we're going to be measuring things to see if they're as long as a pencil. And I found a couple items. So I have a roll of tape. So take a look at this. Is a roll of tape the same length as a pencil? We gotta line it up in the back to, oops, it's hard to do in the air, guys. Sorry about that. So I'm putting my finger at the back of my pencil and sticking it right up against the tape. And do you see which one's shorter? Which thing is shorter, the pencil or the tape roll? The tape roll is shorter. So that was not the same length as a pencil. I have a packet um, that you get at a restaurant of a spoon and a fork and a knife. Let's see if that, because I think it might be the same length as a pencil. So we got to start at the back where it starts and line it up. Do you see that? Is the pencil or the spoon and the fork packet longer? The packet of the napkin and the spoon and the fork, the plastic wrapper is longer than the pencil. The pencil was shorter that time. So let's try something else. I have a pair of scissors here and I think it might be the same length as a pencil. Let's just check it out. Here is my pencil. Now when you do this, I recommend doing it on a table, flat surface. But since I have a trouble with 
the video camera. I've got to do it in the air. So here is, ah, I'm trying guys. Here is my pencil. And here is the back of the scissors. Which item is bigger? The scissors are bigger than the pencil. They're longer. And I have one more thing that I thought looks like it's about as big as a pencil. Let's check it out. It's a package of markers. So let's put the pencil right on the top. Take a look at that. The pencil and the marker package are the same length. They are equal. They're the same size. Isn't that cool? So a marker package and a pencil are the same size. They're equal. So I want you to use a pencil and you're gonna put your finger in the back and measure whatever it is in your house against a pencil to see if your items are longer or shorter than a pencil. Should we measure Hootie against a pencil? Let's do it. Come here, Hootie. So here's Hootie. And here's a pencil. So I've got to put the pencil next to Hootie's body. And let's see who is longer, the pencil or Hootie? Hootie, you are taller or longer than the pencil. Are you happy about that? Nice. Okay, so that's a measuring activity you can do at home pretty easily. And now I wanna do our finger play one last time. I have a new one that I made. We'll do it next time. Let's get you over here closer to where the finger play um, poster is. Let's see. Move my books and get you closer so maybe you guys can see and do it along with me. Here we go. Five little butterflies. Make your fingers five little butterflies. By the door. One flew away. Then there were four. Four little butterflies by the tree. One flew away. Then there were three. Three little butterflies up in the blue. One flew away. Then there were two. Two little butterflies out in the sun. One flew away. Then there was one. One little butterfly now all alone. She was so lonely. So she flew home. Let me look at that words again. Let's try it together. Five little butterflies by the door. One flew away. Then there were four. What number is that? Four little butterflies by the tree. One flew away, then there were three. Three little butterflies up in the blue. One flew away, then there were two. Two little butterflies out in the sun. One flew away, then there was one. One little butterfly now all alone. She was so lonely, so she flew home. Thank you for saying that rhyme with me. I have two caterpillars left. Well, not caterpillars, they're in their chrysalises. I have two chrysalises left inside of our 
butterfly container or our butterfly habitat. So we're still waiting for them to come out of their chrysalises and see how they are. I had a couple of the butterflies um, not do so well when they came out of their um, chrysalises and that sometimes happens. So they couldn't fly very well, but some did and I'm excited and I'm hopeful that these last two will be great. So I hope you're waiting along right with me and I post those videos on YouTube too. So I will keep watching those uh, chrysalises and we look forward to releasing them. But we are almost done with our butterfly um, activity. And so it's been really neat to watch them change and see that life cycle. I hope you've enjoyed it. All right, guys, I will see you again next time. Bye.